there's this huge, there's a whole world of olive oil in this area right there, which is the close range for Savannah. I got some ants, yeah. Well, the biospherian ants are getting into my. I was going to ask, you, did, they, did, you, did they introduce insects here, or are they just because of the. Insects were introduced here, yes, a wide variety from selected areas of the world. For example, to take care of the uh, decaying matter, you need termites. Yeah. So termites were brought in, not locally, but from Africa and Australia or wherever, and other insects from around the world. And then a lot, of course, sneaked in. <laughs> well, it's a good little habitat for them, isn't it? Yeah. Right, turn over. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. Right. Take a mouthful of the last Could you tell me about the 1,500 calorie diet and how it affects you and what it means? Well, it's not a particular calorie level, but you lose weight gradually on a low calorie diet till you're 10 to 25 percent below your set point. Uh, this will extend maximum lifespan if started and carried out well. Can I interrupt you? Sorry. Just to get my question into your answer right. so I, they don't have to use my voice. Could you say whatever, you know, yes. dietary restriction or calorie Yes. Restriction? Okay. Okay. Well, a regime of caloric restriction leading to gradual loss in body weight so you're 10 to 25 percent below your set point will extend maximum lifespan and retard the rate of aging and retard the age-related decline of all measurable physiologic parameters. The immune system is kept younger longer, brain function is kept younger longer, physical activity and prowess are kept younger longer and maximum lifespan can be extended at least in a wide variety of animals and with a high probability in man by 30, 40, 50 percent. This would be living to 140 to 150 years if you start young enough and do it correctly. In, change size, Barry. In practical terms, what does the, the diet involve? No, not specific, but I mean just in general terms. What does the diet involve? In practical terms, the diet involves having a high nutrient density and low calorie part of the diet. So you have as many uh, vitamins, minerals, and so forth, and unknown, let's say, essentials in the diet on a low calorie level. So something like sugar, for example, which has a high calorie content, but practically no nutrient value whatever, is not good for you and not in the diet. What are the elements that you would include in the diet? In general, the diet is high in fish and vegetables and complex carbohydrates. Generally wholesome food, but with some selection towards those things which are really of highest in nutrient value. Broccoli, for example, is an excellent vegetable in terms of its nutrient value. How many calories would a man, to follow the diet, what's the optimum calories per day for a man and for a woman? The amount of calories that one should take as an individual varies with his genetic background and so forth, but it's around 15 to 1800 calories a day. And on that, most people will gradually lose weight and stabilize at a lower weight. Would that be for men and women? There's no difference in for women in how many calories for women? There's no difference between men and women except in the size. So uh, a big woman would take. Uh, let's say more than a small man, but it's not the sexual orientation, it's by weight. Is it, if the optimum is 1,500 to 1,800 calories, that's, that's, what percentage lower is that lower than the recommended average for a person now? The, rec the recommended amount on the average is about 25 or 2,600 calories. So it's about 800 calories less than the usual intake. Of course, some people take a great deal more. Football players will take five to 10,000 calories a day, but that's an extreme physical exercise. Would it be, I mean, do you find it a difficult thing to keep to this diet? The diet is not difficult. It's no more difficult, say, than being on a vegetarian diet. It's not vegetarian, particularly, 
but it's about that level of trouble. And would it be, you said before when we met in UCLA that it was undernutrition rather than malnutrition. I wonder if we did Yes, I call it uh, undernutrition without malnutrition. That just means low calories, but the diet so adjusted that you're not lacking in any essential material, such as amino acids, essential fatty acids, vitamins and minerals. And um, what supplements would you take with the diet for the vitamin supplements? Well, with this diet, supplements aren't really necessary, but I generally take uh, some extra vitamin E and C and beta carotenes, a few things like that. I don't think they're a critical part of the diet. Would you say the diet was the diet a anti-free radical diet? In the sense that low calorie intake will upregulate the natural occurring free radical scavengers or inhibitors in the body, yes it is an anti-free radical diet and also on a low calorie diet you produce less. So it's anti-free radical in those two ways. You upregulate their antagonist and you downregulate their production. Don't worry about it. I wonder if you could explain in layman's terms. You okay, is it, is it all right? Okay. I wonder if you could explain. Sound okay? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> In your book, though, you had quite not a, not a long, but a, a reasonably long list of supplements that you took. I had quite a long list of supplements in my earlier book, Maximum Lifespan, right. and less in the later book, The 120 Year Diet. It's not that I'm particularly against supplements, but the benefit derived from supplements, uh, especially kind of schedule things like oddball antioxidants and so forth, the benefit derived from them is at best marginal and by any order of magnitude far less than you get from caloric restriction itself. So I don't like to emphasize those as though, well, we don't want to restrict calories, so let's take the supplements. That won't work. And yet Dirk Pearson and Sandy say that you can take the supplements, you can burn off the body, the fats, and you basically you can eat whatever you like. Dirk Pearson and Sandy say that, but let them show you some uh, animal survival curves that prove that. There's no evidence whatever from animal studies supporting anything that they say. Could you explain in layman's terms what a free, a free radical is? A free radical is an oxygen atom with an unshared electron so that it uh, is very hyperactive and will uh, grab onto any tissues in order to complete its electron shell, so to speak. And it will immobilize tissues or anything that it gets a hold of. It damages DNA, damages cell membranes, and so forth. I wonder if you could read if you could to do that again. Um, and maybe if you know the analogy that we have free radical damage because of oxygen and water, that our cells rust in very simple, okay. simplistic terms. Right. If you could say that, because it. Yeah. Remember, our audience aren't <clears throat> scientific. A free radical is sort of an oxygen atom with one of its electrons unstuck. It's a little bit like rusting. And so this hyperactivated oxygen atom is trying to fill up its shell and it grabs on to anything in sight. So it'll grab on to a, a tissue here and a tissue there and immobilize them. This could be DNA strands or cell membranes. So it immobilizes anything that it touches, especially bodily parts or fluids or cells. Is there a point in our lives where we have a natural sort of anti-free radical system within the body that does that start oxidizing as well so that it works you know we start rusting it as we get older there is a natural occurring free radical antagonist system in the body we produce so-called free radical scavengers which try to mop up these excess free radicals it isn't that free radicals are entirely bad 
because they are also involved in many essential chemical reactions. They kind of start things, uh, but you don't want them to be in excess. So there's a balance between the production of free radicals and their neutralization. What causes the harmful effects of the free radicals? I mean, I, I believe it's if it becomes, for example, it becomes in contact with a, a molecule of polyunsaturated fact that causes the free radical damage. Right? I mean, there are things we're taking now which we're told are healthy, but in actual fact are very harmful. Well, the free radicals attack about anything that's around. They'll attack proteins, fats, polyunsaturated fats, uh, DNA, and other tissues, and they form insoluble compounds with them so that then they can't be metabolized very well. Is there any indication that the diet, I mean, are there any other sort of regimes one can follow other than calorie restriction that will also put on? There's no scientific evidence that anything besides calorie restriction will, to any substantial degree, retard aging and prolong maximum lifespan. Average lifespan, which is another thing you can prolong by exercise and kind of general good health habits by not smoking, but you will not budge the maximum lifespan set for our species, which is 110 years. What's the point beyond that? I mean, you talk in your book about 600 years as a total maximum lifespan. If we could actually, you know, live that long, maybe we could that. Could uh, our species ever become truly immortal and live thousands of years? Well, let's say that if you stopped all aging, and stop all diseases by some miraculous way, what would happen? If we still had accidents at the same rate that we have today, about 5% of deaths today are accidental deaths, being struck by an automobile or whatever. If we still had those at 5%, then how long would people live if nothing else killed them? The survival curve would come to zero at about 600 years. So that would be the most we could ever live if we still had accidents. If accidents are decreased from 5% to 1%, then you could push it out a little longer. But there's no prospect of a truly immortal, godlike race. What do you think, is it going to be a quantum leap that takes us beyond 120 years to the 600? Beyond 120 years, well, that it was a conservative estimate in my book, The 120-Year Diet. Actually, if one started at 18 or 20 and did it very rigorously, the population curve would terminate about 140 to 150. Beyond that would depend on learning more about the fundamental processes of aging. One of the ways to learn that is by studying the mechanism whereby caloric restriction has all of these global effects, decreases disease, keeps all the tissues younger longer, and pushes lifespan out we could understand the basic mechanism behind that, then maybe we could operate directly to live much longer. Yes, I think that we'll get beyond the 120 or 150 year caloric restriction deal by further basic advances in the science of aging. What would those advances be? What do you think the best bet is? The best bet probably has something to do with DNA repair, free radical metabolism, or hormonal regulation. Why does free radical, or what, sorry, why does diet restriction seem to be the only hope at the moment? Do we know why eating less food makes us live longer? Diet restriction is the only hope at the moment because that's the only thing that has been proven to work in any animal species. We don't know why it works. It influences many things. It keeps the immune system younger, longer. It increases the DNA repair ability. It decreases free radical production, decreases damage from free radicals. So it kind of does so many things beneficially that you can't select out which one is operating. Now you, obviously, your, your personal choice is you follow this diet. Would you recommend it as 
as the sort of pathway for the future? I would recommend this diet as the pathway to the future until something that's proven to work and that's easier to do or better comes along. Right. Someone said to me, I, I th actually I think it was dirt when I saw him, that in societies like the Tibetan monks and Buddhists where they do eat a restricted diet, uh, there's no proof that, that, that they actually do live longer than average. They don't eat a selected highly nutritious diet. It's well, maybe just... you could say the Buddhists. The Buddhists uh, don't eat particularly highly nutritious or selected diet. The real calorie restriction has to be very carefully adjusted. You can't just eat less rice or something and get away with it. Would it be easy for the layman to follow? If they bought your book and they decided to go for it, would they also need the medical tests as well? Would they have this, the, the backup that you obviously have to follow the diet from the regime? The medical tests are not critical, those are just to keep you interested and promote your interest, if you really follow it well.